Okay, so I'm sitting here obviously crying. Um, and it's from something that I felt like other people need to, to know that it's still okay to feel the pain. Um, I'm having a lot of pain today. Um, from my cyst on my tailbone that my father created from his beatings. That cyst contains all the nerve endings that would be at uh, S1, S2, S3. Um, so that affects my digestion that affects my reproductive system. That affects so many other things in that area, my stomach itself. Um, the whole digestive process, pretty much. So I'm sitting here grieving, basically. <laughs> that I wasn't even given an opportunity <laughs> to have a normal physical life. <laughs> But the abuse started even before that with, God, I hate to say it. She tries, but then she fails. But my mom would tell me her problems as she breastfed me. So she started grooming me as an infant to put her needs above mine. And because she's done that, I struggle often with how to handle her. And as a therapist, I do know that many times it's in their best interest to just cut those people off. I've cut her from connecting to my soul. But then she makes these changes and I think that she's doing better and I get happy, you know? one parent that I could actually have some kind of something with. <sighs> but she's a narcissist and so it makes it difficult and everything's about nobody understands what she's going through. She has no water in her house because she didn't take care of her fucking house. She's got, does has no, oh wait, she doesn't have hot water, she has water. She doesn't have heat in her house because again, it goes back to the gas issue in her house and she didn't take care of her house. So all of her fucking issues are her fault. All of them. the pain in my body, that's not my fault at all. <sighs> my father beat me so hard when I was eight, year, eight years old for eating the thighs and legs of the rotisserie chicken that we were going to have for dinner while he was outside talking after he told me to go ahead and start eating. He pulled me up by both of my wrists. Both of them grabbed him, pulled me up the stairs as he beat me with a paddle that's this thick and, well, basically shoulder to shoulder in length that it had a handle on it. Um, and that's where this came from. My neurosurgeon said that 99% sure that that's probably what it is, but there's no way to prove it. <sighs> so for all the people that are going through hell, you're not alone. Some of us are dealing with the abuse 50 fucking years later, still. <laughs> and so when people say, well, you just, you've got to move on. You've got to let that go. It's kind of hard to let it go when your fucking body hurts and you can't have normal bodily function because of them. I couldn't even have children because of this. And not one person in my family did anything to stop it. No one. <laughs> my brother was the only person that ever tried to stand up for me. <laughs> And then my grandma would take me to her house. I'd spend time with her and I was safe there. My dad's father would take me out in the woods and get us all lost, me and the cousins, and then tell me that I knew how to get out because I was native. Of course, he said Indian because that's the way they like to say it. And he was about half of my granny was three quarters. So I think they had the right to call it whatever they wanted to. Um, he was always instilling in me that I was intelligent and that I was capable. <laughs> because they were constantly telling me I was not. <sighs> 
So when people look at me and think I haven't done anything or succeeded in any way, <laughs> if you only fucking knew, I was told I couldn't graduate high school. I was told I'd never be anything more than a stripper. I have a master's degree in counseling. I've actually helped my mom so much that you can have a normal conversation with her at least 70% of the time. She's not a total asshole 70% of the time. Um, I have an amazing husband. Like, I know people that have been through my hell, they don't always come out and get something so incredible. But him is proof of the work that I've done to heal myself. Because someone as healthy and as amazing as him wouldn't want to deal with someone with all the issues that I should still be dealing with had I not done the work. So every fucking time someone tells me I haven't done the work because I still feel the pain from their abuse, fuck off. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. You have not walked in my motherfucking shoes. I have not walked in your motherfucking shoes, but you got no motherfucking reason to ever tell anybody to get the fuck over something if it's still affecting their motherfucking physical body or mental or emotional or spiritual. Those things, I honestly, in a lot of ways, are easier for me to work on because I can work through those. I can separate them out and I understand them. But when my body starts hurting and this shit starts doing what it's doing now, I'm literally sitting on ice packs on my back, my low tailbone, and my butt hole. Like, right there. Because of what they do and the pain that they cause me. <sighs> so I have every right to get upset. But I also try to use it as a teaching moment so that other people know that no matter what the fuck is happening in your life, no matter how bad it seems to be, I'm telling you, it can be better. If your body is stuck and you can't move it at all, you can still work on this and work on this. You can. I know because I have. I hope this was more um, inspiring than... Um, Rage, but I think rage can be inspiring also because it sure inspires me not to talk to them. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm taking a break from my mother. I'm not talking to her. I need some space because I need to focus on my healing. Thank you for listening to me. We can be shackle free. There is such a thing as shackle free healing. My physical pain today brings back the grief from what they've done to my body and how I never got a chance to be normal. My brain didn't even have a chance to wire normally without trauma, and trauma changes that. So for every person that thinks I'm crazy, you don't even know. You wouldn't be able to live in my body. You wouldn't be able to live with what I've endured. So don't judge what you know you cannot handle. Shackle-free healing. I'm able to smile and actually know that my husband and I have a good life. I have a good life. I'm loved. I help people. I've saved my husband's life. He'll say that time and time again from how I've actually helped him physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually with hand working on his body and with energetic and spiritual principles that I've shown him. Healing is real. There is a rainbow. There is the pot of gold. And it can happen. And even when you have those wonderful things going on and you feel so much love, when the pain surges, again, whether it's mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, as I'm having right now, and that anger comes up, process it. Feel it like I just did. And then remember how far you've come and how much better you're doing. And then you'll understand shackle-free healing. Thank you.